Ashlyn, and I will be discussing uh, food deserts and uh, different methods uh, that we use to approach um, uh, researching these food deserts and food insecurity in general. So I will begin with um, uh, like what a food desert is and how we use uh, GIS, which is Geographic Information Systems, to um, analyze the patterns that are um, revealed for food deserts. And um, then I will uh, explore some past studies and some critiques that have gone along with these in more recent studies and some new methods of New methods that uh, more, the more recent uh, critique of research prob or research um, uh, the new methods that are being discovered and how this will uh, apply to public health and I will propose a future project. So the term food desert is thrown a lot thrown around a lot, and it, I believe a, uh, the, a 2019 article with um, a 2019 re, uh, research project, they described it very well. They described it as spatialized patterns of injustice um, that are associated with low access to uh, nutritious foods through retail and social exclusion, um, which I just summed it up very well. Um, it, there is been lo loads of research uh, regarding the whole um, food desert. However, I originally approached this thinking I could do a similar study, but upon finding that almost every city has a, update, a very recently updated map um, of the food deserts, um, as you can see here, is the USDA's uh, Food Access Research Atlas. And um, this is just one of many cities have uh, the, um, yes, they, they, they have it. Um, so in general, past studies have, they use geographic information systems, which for those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's a, um, the, it's using uh, mapping and it's approached very objectively. However, there is the, um, every map is subjective, which I will get into later. And usually most of these, the mainstream techniques to use these um, or to um, present the information is to compare, um, <clears throat> uh, to compare, um, like socioeconomic status, um, like car ownership, if a family has a car, and then how far they can, they have to travel to get to a grocery store or just any place that sells nutritious food. And it, um, and it's exhibited in all of these maps that are, um, that um, spatialized, uh, it enforces the spatialized patterns of injustice that are um, uh, seen with uh, yes. So then um, here is a, the, the second figure, this graph, has, um, it's from a 2012 study um, by the USDA, and it's, it shows the information that is just repeated over and over again with all of the, um, the, um, all of the, like, the research studies that go into this, and they, um, it compares all of the, it just uh, presents the um, socioeconomic and demographics for the majority of all of these. Uh, yes. Uh, however, after reading more about um, more recent studies, they uh, highlighted that a lot of the subjective data is left out and it limited um, it's limited to recognizing the more nuanced socioeconomic factors like redlining and store hours, uh, prices, and even community-based efforts, which was emphasized a lot in one research article, um, which are like uh, corner stores that aren't particularly like seen on, um, they aren't like listed on, on, as businesses, so the more objective maps will 
leave them out. And this quote is from uh, the same 2019 article that um, that a majority of other uh, papers have also come to the conclusion of is that it's just the the method of the mainstream GIS techniques used to um, analyze the food deserts has been it doesn't capture everything that goes on in communities because it's kind of looking at the big picture and it's usually done by people that might not live in the community and so that hence some data is left out. So the there are new methods that are um, being proposed in this field of research and food insecurity is only one of the aspects of like um, just public health in general and so all of these can be applied to other public health issues that communities face. So participatory, participatory geographic information systems is it adds a layer of it adds a layer of community to community knowledge to the um, to like the like factual data um, through like interviews, surveys, which can be represented using um, ArcGIS software and other similar software. This um, and also community asset mapping is similar in the sense that it identifies the assets that the community itself deems helpful um, without taking into account the others. Yeah. And then um, the critical cartography and radical cartography, they're similar theories as um, that maps do reflect and perpetuate power dynamics and it approaches it without trying to ignore like that thinking that all maps are like objective and like I'm an outside opinion. All maps uh, contain a layer of subjective like the own mapper's opinion and yes and that explains it. Um, the uh, and to continue, the, uh, there have been a bunch of successful studies um, that like uh, Taylor and Ard in a 2015 study in Detroit used um, the PGS and community asset mapping um, to do a similar food desert mapping um, in Detroit. And, the, uh, and also uh, PGS was used in Aldred's study in 2009 to um, identify cafes, which was not related to, GI or to food deserts, but still applicable. So I propose to um, study the DFW area, and as the radio show hosts, um, this this method of uh, studying like the general public requires like volunteers and like the knowledge that the study is occurring to like get out there, and so. I propose that the radio show can discuss this, um, the new research methods and spread the word. So, yeah, and then I have to see if I have any questions. Cool, thank you. Timing is the best.